Well, nobody said everything had to have a cause. The only thing metaphysicians throughout the centuries ever said was any conditioned reality would have to have its conditions fulfilled. And then they said that any conditioned reality would have to have its conditions fulfilled not by an infinite set of conditions, but it would have to be done by a finite set of conditions which had a terminating condition, which terminating condition was an unconditioned reality. That's what they said. So when nobody ever started with a proposition, every, everything has to have a cause. It'd be a, a, an idiotic presupposition. What they started with was any conditioned reality must have its conditions fulfilled. The, con the fulfillment of conditions has to have an unconditioned reality at the set of, of a series of conditions. That unconditioned reality itself has to be absolutely simple because compatible with anything which could ever come into being. That absolutely simple reality would have to be unrestricted in the via negativa sense of no intrinsic or extrinsic boundaries. And that, in turn, would have to be absolutely one because, of course, anything that would make a second one would immediately give rise to an instantiation, which would be less than absolutely simple, which, of course, would make the second uh, absolute simplicity a fake or an intrinsic contradiction. Now, that's what metaphysicians said. So what about God? Does God have to have co Of course not. Why? Because God is an unconditioned reality of which there can only be one. We started with conditioned realities need causes, as it were. Conditioned realities need their conditions fulfilled. But an unconditioned reality, by definition, does not need its conditions fulfilled. Now, if you take this metaphysical proof seriously, this is kind of interesting, isn't it? Because, of course, what did Thomas Aquinas just do? He proves, right, and I'm, I'm kind of uh, just doing a, a little bit of an update, you know, with some contemporary language and some contemporary examples like electrons and protons and things. But technically, the proof is quite sound. What is being proven here is the following, that you need at least an, one unconditioned reality. But that unconditioned reality must be absolutely simple. That an absolutely simple reality must be unrestricted or infinite in the sense of the via negativa, no intrinsic or extrinsic boundaries, and therefore it must be one. That is to say, one and only one, because any second would be a fake, which means that it would have to be the continuous creator of everything else that is. So says I, Thomas, other metaphysicians, therefore God must exist. If the definition of God here is an absolutely unique, unrestricted, that is to say infinite, an absolutely unique, infinite, continuous creator of all else that is, which is an unconditioned reality and absolute simplicity, then God as defined must exist. And the interesting thing is there's really only two ways out of this little pup. The first way out is you can deny that, it, that an unconditioned reality has to be absolutely simple, but then you're going to have to explain how it can be compatible with everything else that is. Or you can say that hypothesis F or hypothesis not F are true, that they can really exist in all reality. In other words, you can try and say that there doesn't have to be one, at least one unconditioned reality in all reality. But to be honest with you, if you try to have hypothesis F be true, since you're going to end up with the last condition whose conditions are not fulfilled, which is nothing, that means that you and everything else in the world can't exist. And if you're going to say that hypothesis not F is true, then you're going to say that something is dependent upon an infinite set of conditions to exist. And when you say that, guess what? That means it's dependent upon an unachievable number of conditions in order to exist, in which case, of course, you and everything else will be nothing. The real alternative, then, to getting out of this, the real alternative to getting out of this is, frankly, well, to affirm the existence of an unconditioned, absolutely unique, unrestricted, continuous creator of all else that is, which is absolutely simple, namely God. One last thing. People might be a little bit curious. Might be curious about, well, what about the Trinity? I mean, if you can only have one God, if you can only have one infinite power, 
if you can only have one absolutely simple, pure act of being, if you can only have one absolutely simple, unrestricted reality, which means it must be compatible with everything so as not to be excluded by anything, so that it can be pure, pure uh, uh, acting power, then, well, if there's only one, what about the three persons in the Trinity? We're going to be talking about this quite a bit in another unit, but for the time being, well, let's just say this. That Remember when I was talking about self-consciousness? And I said you could be aware of your awareness, and you could even be aware of your self-awareness, that you could actually be aware right now that you were self-aware? And remember I said that if you could be aware of your self-awareness, you could almost have your own inner universe. You could, as it were, you could like have your own inner world. And there would be the outer world, and in here would be the inner world, which I constituted by my self-awareness, by my awareness of my self-awareness. And in a way, then, I have a, a, a privacy. I, I have, as it were, an, an, an independence. I have a kind of a, an autonomy in my own inner world juxtaposed to the outer world. And if that is the case, then, of course, I actually can have a self-consciousness which makes use of my power. Now, what I want you to just see for the time being is what we have proved is one infinite power. What we have proved is one absolutely simple acting power. What we have proven is one unconditioned, absolutely simple acting power. And now conceive of this. Conceive of three self-consciousnesses making use of that one infinite power. Three persons, which are like three self-consciousnesses, three self-awarenesses, making an unconditioned and unconditional use of that one infinite power source, that one unrestricted infinite power, so that they are using unconditioned that one infinite power. And what are they doing, as we'll see later? They are in love. And they are loving one another such that there is real interpersonal love taking place through these three self-awarenesses making an unconditional use of the one infinite power source, the one infinite nature, the one infinite power of God. And that is the beauty of Christianity. It is the beauty of this proof. It is the beauty of absolute simplicity. It is the beauty of infinity. It is the beauty of the God which can be known through faith and reason.